Okay, folks, thanks for joining us. This is Travis Durek. I'm a product manager here at Peplink, and today we're going to talk to you about the Speed Fusion Cloud. So, as always, Peplink's mission has been unbreakable connectivity and delivering that unbreakable connectivity anytime, anywhere. And so, as the coronavirus has unfolded around the world, that mission is more and more relevant than it ever has been before. And so as we watch this all happen, we realize, you know, there's a need for customers and, and just people anywhere to get connected with this unbreakable connectivity. And there's a better way to do it. Peplink has been doing this for a long time, but it's always been, um, there's been a little bit of setup required. And so we'll talk to you today about how the Speed Fusion Cloud addresses that. But first, I just want to talk to you about what the Speed Fusion Cloud does. What, what can this do for me or anybody trying to work remotely during, during these times? So anybody who's used a cloud application knows internet is required and the quality of the internet connection will have a big impact on the, the amount of productivity you're able to achieve when using these cloud applications. So. Skype for Business, Office 365, Microsoft Teams, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Meet, all these different cloud applications are super popular and productive tools that everybody's been using. And now everybody's trying to use those from home. And so the network quality at your home isn't always the same as the network quality at your office. And so when you're trying to do these things from home, uh, you're connection at home just might not be that reliable. Or if you're like me, you've got three kids who are at home and trying to do school from home. And uh, sometimes we just let Netflix, Netflix babysit them during our work day. And so there's all kinds of constraints on the bandwidth at your home connection. And so whether you're losing it all together or just the quality is getting degraded as all those different people at home are piling on, again, your, your productivity productivity suffers. Those applications start timing out, you get disconnected, you get a sign back in, all kinds of problems can happen. Now, there's, there's lots of solutions out there that allow you to connect multiple internet connections. There's all kinds of LTE routers that have two modems in them, and that's great. That helps you get more bandwidth, that helps you get a failover situation set up. But what we find out is even with those failover routers, if that second connection, if one of those two connections goes down, any traffic that was on that connection breaks. And so the, the failover process goes step one, something breaks, your application fails. And then step two, you have to sign back in, you have to call the person back, you have to try and reconnect. And the failover routers do a good job of making sure that when you go to reconnect, it goes out the healthy connection and doesn't try to use the unhealthy connection. So it it helps you, it, it helps you find a healthy path again, but it doesn't give you that unbreakable experience. Again, you drop off your webinar, you run into all kinds of kind of embarrassing problems that you probably wouldn't have happened when you're in your office. And so that's what Speed Fusion is here to solve. Speed Fusion lets you bring two different internet connections in together and make them act as one seamless connection. So even if one of those even if one of those internet connections breaks, even if it's in the middle of a phone call, even if it's in the middle of a Skype conference, you don't experience that connection break. It seamlessly hands off in the background. And that's what Speed Fusion's packet level SD-WAN technology does that no other LTE router manufacturers can do. So Speed Fusion has four basic benefits to it or four different modes that you can you can use to protect your traffic. You've got bandwidth bonding. This is what a lot of people end up talking about because it's it's extremely unique. That's being able to take two or more connections and make all of that bandwidth available to one single application that you're using. WAN smoothing is, a, is used to protect phone calls or video traffic. So this is for those, those types of applications that you can't have jitter or packet loss interrupting you on. So, WAN smoothing is a great way to guarantee you've got a high quality connection for your, your audio and video conferences. And then hot failover is that seamless handoff between your internet connections. So if, if you're using a, a cable or DSL modem as your primary, 
and that goes down for some reason, hot failover is what's going to let you switch over to that LTE without breaking that call, without breaking that video stream. And PEP VPN is the secure wrapper that makes all of these different technologies possible. So we've talked about speed fusion and how it can help benefit you and, and protect your applications. But what we're here to talk about is speed fusion cloud. So speed fusion cloud is a new service that Peplink launched just a couple of weeks ago as a response to all of the people trying to work from home as they try and avoid coronavirus. So historically, speed fusion required a two box solution, we'll say. You had to have a remote box, say at your house, or maybe at a, at a medical facility out in the field. And then you had to have some sort of a headquarters device. And so here we've got a, a balance 20X out at the remote site, number one, and then we've got an EPX at our, at our company data center, number two. So to make speed fusion work and to get the benefits of it, previously you had to have these two boxes to make it work or any two boxes. Now the other option for number two could be, you could use our fusion hub and put that in a cloud platform. So you could put a Fusion Hub in AWS or Google Cloud or Azure. Instead of having two physical boxes, you could have one box and one virtual machine to make Speed Fusion work. But again, this requires expertise, this requires time, this requires setup. And so it's a great solution, but it's not great for everybody. And it's not great when you're trying to roll something brand new out at the last minute to hundreds of people. So Speed Fusion Cloud aims to solve that problem, make it even simpler. So what Peplink has done is we've built a global network of Speed Fusion nodes in different data centers and different cloud providers all over the world so that there's access points to the Speed Fusion Cloud in any, any region that you need to get connected in. And so we're hosting that second box, if you will. We're, we're making that cloud side infrastructure available to anybody who wants to get unbreakable connectivity anywhere they want. So whether you're one person just trying to solve your own problems or you're a company of a few hundred people trying to get all of your workforce working productively at home, all you need to do is get them a Peplink router at their homes and get connected to the Speed Fusion Cloud so that they can protect all that traffic seamlessly. And so what we've done is we've launched this service early. This was supposed to launch in the fall, but again, what time better than now to get people connected and, and help protect all their applications. And so we're offering this free for 90 days for anybody who wants to use this right now. So we're gonna dive into a router and I'm gonna walk you through the setup of it and show you how to, how to get started and then show you how to actually protect different applications or devices that you wanna you want to ensure the best connectivity for. So there's six basic steps that we have to walk through here. Step one, we just have to be on the right firmware. So I'm going to jump over to our form and just show you guys where you can access all these resources here. So if you go to form.peplink.com, you're going to see two topics that are pinned at the top. We've got this quarantine response, safeguarding your connectivity, and then we've got firmware release for Speed Fusion Cloud. These are kind of your landing points for all the information that you're gonna need to get connected to the Speed Fusion Cloud. So first thing we, we need to do is we need to get the right firmware for our device. So if we click on that, you can see we've got all the firmware builds for all the different devices needed. So I'm gonna just click on download. And then for today's demo, I'm gonna be using my PDX. The PDX is a rapid deploy unit that's soon to be launched. So the PDX is a, a four modem device in a, in a ruggedized Pelican case so that you can bring this thing anywhere you need the best connectivity possible at the push of a button. So you can just boot this up and you're gonna have all the connectivity you need anywhere, anywhere you go. So, to apply the firmware you need, you can download the link that, that I just showed you, or you can just push it. They're preloaded and in control as well. So if we go to the device, and we're at the device level here, if we go to settings and go to firmware management, okay. 
So you can see I've actually loaded this firmware already. It shows existing firmware 8.0.2 in this S089. This is the firm, this indicates the firmware needed for Speed Fusion Cloud. But pretend we haven't loaded that yet. If you look in this drop down here, you can select that firmware right from the list. I typically choose to push firmware immediately, but you can also push it on a scheduled basis. If if you're in production hours at that time, you can you can schedule that however you choose to do that. Either way, click save. Again, I've already pushed this firmware out, so I'm not going to reprovision that here. The other way to do that is from the router directly. If you go under the system tab and you go to firmware. You can just choose to upload that file that we just downloaded. And then you click manual upgrade. Again, I've preloaded the firmware so we don't have to wait for the, the router to take that and upgrade. But again, that covers step one. So step two, we have to register the serial number of the device so that we can get access to the Speed Fusion Cloud. So if we click on the About Speed Fusion Cloud link, or if we go back here, this quarantine response, both lead to the same forum post. And this is basically the instructions laid out in, in great detail here. So getting the special firmware, we just covered that one. Now enabling free speed, speed Fusion Cloud access. If you click on that link, it's going to take you to the enrollment page. So it's pretty simple. You just enter your email address in, enter your device serial number, verify that you are in fact not a robot. And this is gonna air out because I've already registered this device, but had I not, it's gonna say, cool, you're good. And then it's gonna email you the key. So here you can see, you're gonna get an email from no-reply at peplink.com. It's gonna have your activation keys listed in there. So once you've got your key, then you can go back to your device. If you go to the system tab, there's a feature add-on section. Now, if you, if you wait a little while in control, we'll push this key out to you automatically. But if you're impatient like me, you can just come in and activate that. Again, this is gonna air out because I've already done this step, but you should get a notice that says Speed Fusion Cloud 100 gigabyte license activated. So once you do that, we've gotten through step three, we've gotten through step four. Now we have to go to step five and enable Speed Fusion Cloud on the web interface. So if we go back to the dashboard, we're gonna just take a quick look. And we don't see any obvious signs of Speed Fusion Cloud showing up here. It looks just like the dashboard normally does. So if we come into the advanced tab on a Max router, the first thing you get brought to is the Speed Fusion page. And so here we haven't set up the local ID. I'm just going to click Save, it's auto populated. And when I do that, it looks normal, except there's this new section that you normally don't see. That's Speed Fusion Cloud. So by default, it says no Speed Fusion Cloud is defined. Now, before the Speed Fusion Cloud, you would come in here and you'd click New Profile and you'd enter in all the technical details you need to get that tunnel set up to whatever box or, or cloud appliance you're sending traffic to. But with the Speed Fusion Cloud, it's all pretty much done for you. If I click on edit, everything's set up. There's a little bit of customization you can choose to do if you want, but you don't have to do anything other than click save. So now that I've clicked save, it says Speed Fusion Cloud is enabled. So I'm going to apply those changes and it's going to bring us to, back to the dashboard and we'll see what happens. So you can see on the dashboard now we've got the Speed Fusion Cloud section here and you can see it's going to start building the tunnels. We've got two tunnels by default. We've got our default tunnel which gives you Speed Fusion bonding and hot failover and then we've also got a Speed Fusion Cloud WAN smoothing tunnel which again helps you protect voice traffic and things like that. Just below here, you're gonna see your data usage allowance. And so you can see I've got 100 gigabytes available to me and my expiration date is July 7th, 2020. So we've got our default tunnel up, the WAN smoothing tunnels coming up as well. 
So we've done step one through five now in just over 10 or 12 minutes, not too bad. Now the last step we need to do is steer traffic to the speed fusion cloud. So setting all, setting all this up doesn't necessarily start protecting your traffic until you tell the router what traffic to protect. So to do that, we have to set outbound policies. So if we come to advanced, then you click on outbound policy. Now we can actually start to carve out traffic or, or devices that we want to protect through the speed fusion cloud. So we're going to click on add a rule. Before we do that, actually, let me just take a look at the client list. I'll show you, I'll show you what we're going to do here. If we go to status and then client list, we've got this IP phone here on the network. So this is, we're gonna copy the IP address of this IP phone. So let's say this is a remote worker of yours. You're sending a, a voice over IP phone with your remote employee so that they can take calls and talk to customers from their home. And again, voice over IP is one of those finicky applications where you know, available bandwidth or quality of bandwidth at your home just might not be enough to make the voice quality consistently good. And so you don't want your, your users at home having kind of unprofessional garbly vo voice calls. You want to make sure that they've got a good, a good voice experience when they're, when they're using that phone. You also don't want to protect that, that person's children's Netflix traffic, right? You don't, you don't want to send all of that traffic to the speed fusion cloud. You want to just make sure that you're protecting the things that matter to the work side of what your people are doing at home. So if we go back to the outbound policy section, we're going to create a rule to protect that phone's traffic. So I click on add a rule. I'm just going to call this IP phone. And so we took the IP address of that phone. So I'm going to enter that in as the, as the source. So anything coming from this phone, I'm telling this, this rule to protect it. And I don't care where that phone is talking to. So I like to use the priority algorithm because it's, it's very flexible. And so what we're going to do here is you can see on the right, there's these two speed fusion cloud tunnels that are not in use right now. I'm going to drag those over to the top of the list. So what I've done is I've dragged, I've dragged over the speed fusion cloud WAN smoothing profile first, because again, that's a great way to protect voice traffic. If that WAN smoothing tunnel isn't available for some reason, then it's going to go down to the next item on the list, and that's the Speed Fusion Cloud default tunnel. So that's going to give me the bonding and hot failover. Still definitely better than not protecting the traffic at all. WAN smoothing is ideal, but if that's not available, again, we can switch back to at least give it that hot failover. Now, if the Speed Fusion Cloud is unavailable completely, priority lets me just move on down the list to use whatever internet connection might might be there. So we've got some fallback plans if Speed Fusion Cloud, for whatever reason, isn't there. I like to use this terminate sessions on link recovery. That's basically your fallback. So if we start out and WAN smoothing isn't available, but five minutes later, we, we find that, that that profile is connected, checking that terminate sessions on link recovery box is going to steer that traffic back to the higher priority connection when it becomes available instead of leaving it at wherever, wherever it got set up. So I'm going to click Save. OK, so we can see we've got the IP phone rule here. And I'm going to apply those changes. So now we can see we've got both tunnels up. Everything looks happy. We've got green lights everywhere. I'm going to come back to the Speed Fusion, the status page, and we'll look at Speed Fusion. And so here you can see those two different Speed Fusion profiles. You get all the nitty gritty technical details about them. So you can see the latency of each of my cellular connections to the Speed Fusion cloud. 
you can see if there's any packet loss. And right now, you can see there's really no traffic going through any, either of those connections. The other thing we can look at here, if we go to status and active sessions, We can see there's no active traffic happening right now. So we're going to boot up that phone and just see what it does. So I've just powered up, I've just reset that phone so that we can get that connected and have it follow that speed fusion cloud rule that we created. So while we're waiting for that, I'm just going to go through some of the questions here and see if we can address any any quick questions and then once we get done with the demo i'll keep going on the questions and you guys can ask as many questions as you need So I think the biggest question that I see so far is just people are looking for a list of the data center locations. I, I know there's at least two nodes on in North America, Europe, Asia. I don't think there's an Africa node yet. Um, but you know, specific to the US, there's an East Coast and a West Coast. And in each data center location, we've got multiple instances. So I think there's four or five fusion hubs in each of those instances. And the Speed Fusion Cloud, the cool thing about it is it auto scales. So as we get more and more users, more and more traffic, new nodes will pop up in those data center locations. And so it makes it really easy for, for you as an administrator because you don't have to do all that load balancing in the background. You don't have to scale the infrastructure. And you don't have to tell the devices where to go. As, as they connect to the Speed Fusion Cloud, they automatically identify the closest nodes to them and select those so that, again, it takes all of that management overhead out of your hands. OK, so I've got my phone online. If we look at the active sessions table, we should see we've got, this is my phone again, 192.168.50.10. You can see it's got two sessions right now going through that WAN smoothing profile that we, that we told it to. So it, we're just validating that the device that we've chosen to protect is actually being protected. So that all looks great. So we're going to come back to the Speed Fusion page, the Speed Fusion status page. I'm going to make a quick phone call. So here you can see we've got that Speed Fusion Cloud WAN smoothing profile. And you can see there's active traffic going through there. So WAN smoothing, again, it duplicates those voice packets across all your connections. So you can see that phone call is using each one of these connections. If we look at a graph, I think that's a really helpful way to, sorry, folks, I had paused the share. We'll go back to that screen. So here, we're going to restart this phone call. So 
So here you can see there's traffic going across all of the different internet connections. Again, that's what WAN smoothing's purpose is. It's, it's meant to duplicate all your traffic so that it goes across every one in case one of those fails or has an issue. Now, again, if we look at the graph, I think this is a really good way to visualize it. So you can see there's different colors. There's a lot going on here because we've got four internet connections active and the PDX has all kinds of available connections, but you can see the, the stacked colors here on the graph. And so that represents the duplicated traffic. So you've got the call going out all four cellulars at once. And you can see some of the graphs, some of the colors are have some spikes on them and some of them don't. And so that's what WAN smoothing does is it, it fills in those gaps. As one connection has a little hiccup or a skip, it, it sends those duplicate packets out so that the other connection can pick up the slack for it. So again, this is the best way to guarantee you've got absolutely smooth calls when, you, when you're doing voice, voice over IP over, over unreliable connections. So I just hung up that call. And now you can see the graph is tapered off. The traffic has stopped going through there. Again, on the, on the table view, again, you see there's really no traffic going through the Speed Fusion Cloud again. And if we come back to the dashboard, you can see we use just a tiny little bit of bandwidth. Our 100 gigabytes of free usage has dropped down to 99.99. .99. And so you get a pretty real-time view of how much traffic you've used there on that, on that dashboard panel. So that's six steps to get up and running on the Speed Fusion Cloud and get something protected. There's lots of ways you can do those outbound policy rules. There's plenty of documentation on how to use outbound policies, but if you're not sure, you're not comfortable with it, talk to your, your favorite PepLink partner. They'll get you guided in the right direction on that. Now, the last thing we want to talk about is, this is free for 90 days, but what happens after that? So here's a, here's a table to illustrate what the pricing is going to look like for this once, once the free trial period is up. So right at the top, you can see we've got the Speed Fusion Cloud free plan. Again, that's 100 gigabytes of usage at 50 megabits per second. And that's good for three months for free. So the important things to note here on this is the usage and the speed is per device. So if I've got 100 gigabytes to use over three months, at 50 megabits per second, if I get 10 devices on there, each of them are gonna get 100 gigs and each of them are gonna be able to push at 50 megs per second. It's not a shared plan, so you don't have to worry about maxing out that 50 megs per second. Now, one device could max that out, sure, but again, if you're doing multiple devices, those aren't gonna all eat at the same 50 megs per second. They're each gonna get their own 50 megs per second. Now, once that free data trial is up, there's some very affordable plans that you can purchase here to keep that, keep that service going. So we've got 200 gigs, 500 gigs, a terabyte, and two and a half terabytes. And you can see you can use these data buckets over different lengths of time. So the smaller ones are three months, then we move up to six months, and then we've got a one year plan for that two and a half terabytes. So for a pretty minimal investment, you can get that hosted Speed Fusion Cloud, that global infrastructure taken care of for you so that you don't have to worry and, and manage all of that. You can just deploy your devices and, and protect the traffic that you need and keep your users productive. So with that, I'm going to just go down the question list and start addressing those one by one. I'll let you guys continue to pile them on. I'm happy to stay and answer as many questions as, as we can as we can cover. So just a second while I load all these questions up.
Okay, so I just showed all of the pricing info and people are of course asking about pricing for other regions, prices for Europe. I'm not exactly sure what the Europe pricing is. I would reach out to your Peplink account manager, but I would expect it's going to be very, very close in euros to what the dollar value listed there is. But again, reach out to your, your Peplink partner. So I see a question, does SpeedFusion Cloud, if say for example, you're using this on a yacht, do you have to have a GPS antenna up at all at all times for this to work? No, you don't. It's, it's not based on the physical location of the device. We just determine the shortest latency path to a SpeedFusion Cloud node. And so again, GPS is not required to make this work. We'll find the closest node in terms of latency, not geographically necessarily. So I see a question about is SpeedFusion Cloud enabled in South America? I don't believe the South America nodes are up yet, but uh, definitely I would open a support ticket and ask for that. Just put in a, go to ticket or support ticket.peplink.com and open a support ticket asking for that. Um, we're able to add new nodes pretty quickly. So get those requests in if you've got a location that you need, you need to make sure that there's a local node nearby. See another question about where are the Fusion Hubs hosted AWS, Google Cloud. Um, so we pick a, we've got a variety of cloud providers, and so we're not stuck on one cloud or the other. And so that will vary region to region. Whoever has the the most reliable and and cost effective platform in those regions will will use multiple providers. And as the service grows, we will add more and more providers in each region as well. And so this can get more interesting as you start trying to protect, say, Azure traffic. If, you, if you've got an Office 365 application or something like that, we'll be able to add more nodes so that that traffic gets steered to an Azure node instead of an AWS node or something like that. So you'll definitely see more functionality added to this system as, as we grow. Again, we launched this early to get this capability in people's hands right away. And so uh, originally this was slated to come out this fall. And so again, we'll add more features as, as this ramps up. Another question is how can I choose the location? Right now that's not a, a, an option. It automatically determines which location it's gonna connect to in terms of the, the SpeedFusion Cloud node. But that is another feature on the roadmap is giving you some more visibility and control as to what what nodes you might want traffic to show up at. Another question, does the 90 days start when the customer starts using it or is there a deadline when it ends for everybody? So right now that 90 days is based on when you drop that serial number into that registration page. That's when your, your 90 day window starts. Um, I expect that sometime in the distant future here, we will, we will close down this free offer. So at some point the offer won't be available anymore to people. But again, it starts whenever you dump, dump your serial into that registration form. So one question, another question I see is, will there be any bandwidth limitations on the cloud and is it possible for the cloud links to get congested? So there are bandwidth limitations. I think that question came in before I showed the table, but again, you saw either the 50 or the 100 megs per second per device limit there. And in terms of congestion, again, that's something we're monitoring. So as, as nodes get congested, we will auto provision new nodes in those regions so that we can better distribute the load as it's happening. So again, the SpeedFusion Cloud, the really cool thing is it auto scales so that you don't have to manage that side yourself. Another question, can SpeedFusion work over an Ethernet WAN? Absolutely, that's one of the best parts about SpeedFusion is it works over any WAN you want. And so, 
I'm going to just pop into one of these profiles to show you how you can manage that. So in my example, I've got four cellular connections. You can see when one and two up here are not being used, but let's pretend they are. So if we come to the advanced side and we see the speed fusion cloud here is enabled, I'm just going to click edit. What you could do, let's, let's say you have two, two wired internet connections or maybe even just one wired internet connection. You can set that at priority one and then you can set your cellulars all at priority two. And this is customizable per profile. So for WAN smoothing, it's usually best to use them all at the same time. Again, these are choices you can make on your own and you can play with in practice. But by default here, we're saying, let's send all of the Speed Fusion Cloud traffic out these two Ethernet WAN connections. If they're not available, then let's send them out these four cellular connections. So that way you can protect your cellular usage. So if you've got wired connections that should be reliable enough, should be high quality enough to protect your applications, then you can just prefer to send traffic that way. Again, maybe that's an Ethernet WAN. So that's how you can kind of manage your data usage on those cellular connections while using different WAN connection types. Another question is the free 90 days work, does that work on devices that are out of warranty? Yes. We are letting anybody who has a device that's in warranty, out of warranty, you're able to use Speed Fusion Cloud for these free 90 days. So go ahead and get it going. You just won't have in control access to do the provisioning of the license key and those things. You'll still have to log into your router locally to get that set up. But again, out of warranty devices are eligible for the 90 day free trial. So another question I see here is clarifying is this is the service available only for internet traffic or is there a way to build a corporate network based on the speed fusion cloud? Let's say you've got a hundred retail sites. So yes and no, it, it's generally, it's, it's for internet bound traffic. One thing you could do, so you're not gonna be able to build a private network like you would with speed fusion normally. In, in general, speed fusion cloud right now is it at, at, at the first launch here is internet only. So you wouldn't be able to do like private addressing and do all that with the Speed Fusion Cloud. If you had a customer who has existing IPsec firewalls, that would be something you could do. You could route those firewalls through a Speed Fusion Cloud connection and protect that IPsec traffic, similar to how we protected the phone traffic. So that's one way you could take an existing network and protect that with Speed Fusion Cloud but still preserve that private network aspect of it. But again, it won't work like, like the speed, like the privately self-hosted speed fusion that you're used to, where you can build a, a completely private speed fusion network. Another question is the public IP address shared or dedicated. It is a shared IP. There's no inbound services. It's purely for outbound protecting outbound traffic to the cloud. Are there any restrictions on the device models? No, you can get this on any, any Peplink router, Peplink PepWave router. Is the data usage by device? Yes, the data plans and the usage you see on the dashboard right now are tied to that unique serial numbers usage. See another question, how do you how do you protect this so that privacy and, and people's people's information is preserved? So by default, these anybody connected to the Speed Fusion Cloud, you're not allowed to connect peer-to-peer. -peer. We, we've specifically blocked that so you can't talk to another Speed Fusion Cloud node user. And so it's just like your 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 home internet connection. All of that traffic is getting funneled to the head end of the ISP at your home in the Speed Fusion Cloud, all that traffic is getting funneled to those cloud nodes and then 
exiting to the internet. So each session is independent of each other. There's no way to intercept those. There's no way to snoop on other people's traffic. It's, it's completely a one-to-one -one path from you out to the Speed Fusion Cloud and then the internet. Another question is, if, if we're currently running a Fusion Hub on AWS, can this run in parallel with that? And what are the differences? So yes, you can run this in conjunction with existing Speed Fusion tunnels. So if you've got, for example, a private network using Speed Fusion already in place, you can still use that with, and then add the Speed Fusion Cloud so that you could route internet bound traffic through the Speed Fusion Cloud, and then you can keep your private traffic on those existing tunnels. So that's definitely a, a compatible scenario. They are able to coexist with existing Speed Fusion tunnels. So one clarification on the pricing, that table that I showed, I'll pull that back up here. The pricing, people are asking, number one, that's a per device price. And number two, the period that it's good for is listed here. The other period that it's good for is the amount of usage. So if you use two and a half terabytes in six months, that plan has been expired. If you use one terabyte over 11 months, that's still active for that last month. And that's a per device license. So you, you, pay, for the, you pay for the license. So if we buy that $79, $79.99 license, you pay that once and you get it for up to a year or two and a half terabytes, whichever, whichever exhausts first. That's not a monthly price. That's just a one-time price for the duration of either that term or the, the bandwidth usage. see another question about how do we choose which region the traffic is sent to and right now that's completely automatic again we check based on the latency of between that router and all of the speed fusion cloud nodes and we pick the shortest path latency wise and in the future we will open up some way to control maybe more manually if you want to prefer a certain region another question if i Finish that plan up in a month. Can I purchase another one? Absolutely. You can you can top off those data plans as much as, as often as you need to. So if you use up your one year plan in a month, you can go buy another one. So there's no you, you don't need to wait for another one. Another question asking about compatibility with older hardware revisions that don't support new firmware. At this time, I don't think we're going to add Speed Fusion Cloud support to the old end of life hardware platforms that don't support the latest firmware. Um, that's something you could definitely open up a support ticket for if, if you've got a unique situation where you think that's, that's needed. Um, but I don't believe that's on the roadmap right now. Another good question here, for example, if I've got a balance one, do I need to load a Speed Fusion license on the device and able to use the Speed Fusion Cloud? And the short answer is no. That, that's one nice thing. The Speed Fusion Cloud, if you're using a, a lower end device that doesn't have that native Speed Fusion capability, this will activate that automatically 
only for the Speed Fusion cloud. So you'd get the Speed Fusion bonding capability to the Speed Fusion cloud, even if your device doesn't have a Speed Fusion license on it. So that's one nice way to simplify things and keep it affordable for people as well. I see a question about whether or not it's available in Canada. Um, the nodes I know in North America right now are East Coast in Virginia and West Coast in California. So it's definitely available, but your traffic would be going to the US and back. So if there's a specific need or limitation where that's not acceptable, again, a support ticket would be the best way to handle that. And I know there's platforms we use that have nodes in Canada, so and I know you're not the first person to ask about Canada, so those are definitely aspects of the service that we'll be updating and enhancing as those requests come in. Another question, I think it's a, it's a simple question, but I think it's very valid to talk about here. Question is, the service require, does the service require two internet connections to be useful? And the short answer is basically yes. Speed Fusion on its own isn't that useful with one internet connection. It's, it's that failover or that bonding capability that makes Speed Fusion unique and advantageous and so like with a br1 mini if you're if you've got 100 people that you've just sent home to work from home they've all got their own internet connections already right chances are they've got a dsl or a cable or some sort of broadband connection at their home and so you can use that as the foundation and then if you send them with a br1 mini you put a sim card in there and then they've got that cellular connection as the backup and so that's how you would achieve a, a two connection setup for somebody with a simple device like the BR1 Mini. But again, it, it's the two internet connections that really make Speed Fusion the most valuable. Another question about single internet connection scenarios. If you use WAN smoothing on a single internet connection, how does that work? So you could use WAN smoothing on a single internet connection, but again, you're not gonna get the best benefits of it. You would basically be sending two copies of the same traffic over the same internet connection, which might help a little bit if you've got some kind of short-term packet loss, but unlikely to provide the benefit you're really hoping for. Two internet connections, again, is the best way to do that. And with the outbound policies, you can help reduce your load on like a cellular connection. So again, in the example I outlined, only that phone's traffic would be going over those cellular connections by default. Everything else would just ride over the, the, the native connections instead of using Speed Fusion Cloud. So that's one way to protect how much data you you use on that second internet connection, if that's a concern. Much thanks, Stephen. The sentiment is back at you.
Another question, what happens if the data usage is depleted before the period of the SKU? So basically it's just gonna stop routing traffic that way. And so that's where those priority rules are important. Uh, some people like to use the enforced rules. So if you use a rule that's enforced, that means your traffic can only use that one path. So I'll just show that quick. I think that's a good one to illustrate. So if we look at this IP phone rule, again, you can see we've, we've chosen priority and then it give, priority gives you all of these options to exhaust. If you choose enforced, you get to choose one. And so if I choose one and that's not available, my traffic goes nowhere. So enforced can be kind of a dangerous rule. It's simple, it's easy to configure and it's very straightforward, but again, it can be dangerous if that, that interface that you've told it to go to doesn't, doesn't work for some reason. And so again, that's, you know, if you're, if you're running out of your data bucket, that would be a great reason to do the priority rule instead of an enforced rule. So that if that tunnel does go down, then you can fail over to your normal internet connections and continue on without the speed fusion cloud protection. Another question we've been getting a lot from is how can I buy this? You can buy it on our website, but you can more importantly, you can buy it from your Peplink partners. This is something that Peplink partners are gonna be able to sell. And it's something that will be sellable just like any other Peplink product or license that, that's available today. So everybody will be able to participate and end users can buy it from the the partners that they they know and trust and that already are familiar with their needs and their networks and so it's not going we're not going to redraw the lines in terms of how we how we sell the speed fusion cloud versus our other warranty or subscription plans that's it will follow a very similar pricing model to those and again resellers and distributors you can reach out to your account manager to get the details on on what those pricing structures look like See another question that relates back to those WAN priorities. Is it recommended to keep all of your WAN connections around the same latency? Bad idea to add a satellite connection into the mix. Generally speaking, I would group WANs within the Speed Fusion profile based on their technology type. So I would keep wired connections in the same group versus satellite connections versus LTE connections. If you try to bond two very different latency connections, you're gonna get poor results. Now, the Speed Fusion Cloud automatically provisions some settings to work around that, so you're not gonna dig yourself into a deep hole, but you're also not gonna get all the benefits you would if you structured the links a little bit better. Again, this only applies if you've got cellular connections mixed with satellite connections or mixed with landline connections. When you start trying to mix different technology types, you'll wanna kind of order those in priority instead of all in the same priority. Okay, folks, that pretty much, we've pretty much ran out of time here. We're at one o'clock. Thank you so much for joining. If you've got more questions, I would open a support ticket or talk to your account manager at Peplink or talk to your, your reseller partner that you're used to buying Peplink from and we'll get those questions funneled up to the right people and answered. Again, thanks so much for joining us.